All right, now for this next step, I went ahead and uh, shut down the T-Rex and I figured to fix that uh, visual problem, I uh, removed STD, added QS QXL, and now we have access to some higher resolutions. So when I rebooted the T-Rex box, I've gone into the settings and displays and cranked up the resolution to something a little bit nicer to look at. That will help us a lot as we move forward. Um, go ahead and close this now. All right, let's take a look at the terminal. And I want to recap and spend just a little bit more time talking about our networking as we move forward. This is going to be very important. So these are the interfaces which are allocated to the T-Rex. Uh, the loopback is automatically generated, and we're going to leave it alone. Um, for the EVNG version of Ubuntu Desktop, which is to say the, the image you can download off their website, which works natively and, and without any uh, fixing, with EVNG, it defaults to ENS3 as the first interface and then kind of increments upward from there. Um, now, we uh, connected the very first interface to the management cloud and then went down from there in the last uh, in our last video. So ENS4, ENS5 were our port pairs for the branch, uh, branch one to the data center and then ENS 6 and 7 were our port pair for branch 2 to the data center. So that's how it was connected. And these numbers and this kind of incremental, you can, uh, the MAC addresses you'll see increment by one, for example, um, this incremental setup is based on how we connected the T-Rex to the rest of the network. If we had uh, connected it differently, then the numbering would be the same, but of course the actual physical connectivity would be different. So pay close attention to how you connect the T-Rex. You should probably go ahead and, as a best practice, go ahead, uh, connect the first interface to the management cloud, just so you all will always know what interface to either put an IP address on or to turn DHCP on, depending on your setup. Um, and then from there, you would just do it in port pairs. So. Uh, like I said, with ENS 4 and 5, we connected that to branch 1 switch and VC core. And then ENS 6 and 7, we connected to branch 2 switch and VC core. Just being deterministic for when we go to configure the actual uh, interfaces for the T-Rex. So what's the next step? The next step is we want to go to uh, the T-Rex website and the T-Rex GitHub and download or get clone the T-Rex package. Now this is Ubuntu Desktop, so Ubuntu Desktop doesn't come with Git automatically. If you're using Ubuntu Server, uh, I think anything, well, for sure 16 and up uh, have Git pre-installed, but Ubuntu Desktop is, is uh, desktop or user focused, and so Git's not pre-installed. It's not a big deal, we just need to install it so that we can use it to download the T-Rex package. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, we need to just supply our password and using sudo, which is like our super user do command. Um, and we need to do that on Ubuntu especially because uh, the, the super user has a abilities that our regular user doesn't. So your login is a normal user. So for example, this is user and you have some permissions, pretty much your own permissions uh, to your own files and folders, but you don't have the super user permission. So we put sudo in front of a lot of the commands, especially as pertains to downloading and installing packages and running certain programs because you need some root privileges to do that. Now in this case, you can see that uh, on this machine, I've, I've previously downloaded Git. So it's a, it, was, it went a little faster, but basically it would do the same thing uh, in your case. It would go uh, find whatever package manager it is that you're using on your distro, download that package and install it for you. All right, so now that Git is installed, we can actually go to the T-Rex website and download or clone the T-Rex package. Now, Based on where you want that to live, you would need to go to that directory before running your git clone command. But in this case, um, this is just the home directory for the user that came pre-installed with uh, Ubuntu Desktop. And since I'm not trying to get extremely into the Linux piece, this will be fine. So 
So let's open up uh, in Firefox. We go to the the T-Rex website. So there you go. And then from there, we'll actually jump over to the GitHub. And the package that we're looking for, the repo we're looking for, is T-Rex Core. So click on T-Rex Core and see where it says clone or download. We're actually going to use our cloning with the HTTPS. We're going to copy this and go back to our terminal. And then we're going to use git clone. And then we're actually going to point at that uh, repo. And we'll pull down uh, from the repository all of the package, uh, the repo, and it's going to put it on the desktop. So this is going to take just a few minutes, so I'll probably go ahead and speed up through this part, and we'll check back in once it's installed. All right, looks like our uh, package was cloned down successfully. And if you do an ls here, you'll see that it created a new uh, directory called T-Rex Core. That's where the package was, uh, the repo was cloned to. So the next thing we need to do is to go into T-Rex Core. And you'll see that it downloaded all of the uh, directories and the files that we need to run uh, T-Rex. So it's all, it's all now on this computer. This computer can now run T-Rex and be a T-Rex boss. Um, there's a couple things we need to do before we can start building that out. Uh, the very first thing we need to do is to compile the uh, data plane development kit drivers. This is the drivers that uh, T-Rex uses for the for the NICs. So the very first thing we should do is to go into the Linux DPD decay folder. If we take a look here, we have a script called B. And how we're going to activate that, and by the way, uh, just as an aside, again, not trying to get too far into the Linux piece, but in Ubuntu desktop, at least, and some other uh, flavors of Linux, you can often see if a file is executable, by a, it'll have a different color. So, for example, the, the B, is a, I know, is an executable script, and so on is CompileBird and, and some of these other ones. Uh, we're just going to be using the one that's called B. That's the build command. So we're going to use sudo, and we're going to run B. And, we, and how you do that uh, actually is just put a dot and a forward slash followed by the script, and that just tells it to execute. And then we're going to configure first. All right, so this was expected, but I wanted to show you what it looks like. So uh, we're trying to run the script to configure the DPDK uh, compiler. And what the compiler, what the script does is look to make sure that all of the packages that are needed to run the compiler are installed on our Ubuntu desktop, and they're not. So this is not unusual with the Ubuntu desktop because um, these are some these are compilers. So basically what we need to do is go ahead and install this since we don't have it pre-installed. So again, we're going to just install some of this some of these packages that we're missing. So G++, we'll go ahead and install. Just let it run. It's going to uh, install the G++ uh, the GCC compiler and the G or G++ compiler and we'll be done. Um, and we'll check it again. At this point, we really uh, just need to run some scripts that will build our T-Rex up and then configure it and then run it um, while we uh, configure some stuff along the way to get, get it going. So we've now installed the G++ and GCC compiler uh, for the data plane development kit. So let's go ahead and run the script again and see what happens. So we're going to run our configure script again now that we've installed one of the dependencies and just see if the script fails again, uh, if we're missing any more packages. All right, so we are missing something, uh, but it tells us very, very clearly what it is we're missing and how to get it. So we'll just go ahead and copy this, we'll run it, and we'll uh, install this dependency. All right, now 
I think that's our last dependency. We're going to find one more time, uh, run the script again, and see if we're missing any more dependencies to compile our data plane development kit NIC drivers. All right, so this is okay. This is not an error. Uh, even though we're missing you know, some of this, uh, it specifically tells us that it'll use its own internal version. That's okay. This is not a, an error so much as it's kind of a warning saying, you know, this is the way it's going to be. If this is a problem, this is probably what the problem is. Configure, finish successfully. So now we've configured uh, our compiler and now we need to actually do our compiling. And this is going to take a while. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the video. I'm going to start it so you can see what it looks like. And then I'm going to cut and I'll come back uh, when it's done. It's going to take several minutes. So we're going to run B again. And this time we're going to run build. So we've compiled, we've built our compiler. We're ready to compile the data plane development kit, NIC drivers. And now we need to actually do that work. Oh, looks like we're missing something. Interesting. Could not create the, oh, I see the problem. And this will happen to you too. And I'm gonna leave this in here because this could happen to you. Uh, you can see where I ran the script without using sudo. It, that meant that I'm not running it with elevated privileges and most likely the script was looking for certain access uh, and certain folders that it couldn't see without running with elevated privileges. So let's try this again. All right, this is what we should be seeing. And this is, as you can see, this is gonna take quite a while. Uh, but at this point, it's gonna sit, go through and compile the DPDK drivers, and that is what we will need in order to move forward with the configuration of our T-Rex. So I'm gonna stop here, and I'll pick up when it's done.